All right, good evening and welcome to the group stages of the playoffs between Clear Lake High School and last year's winter champions, Lowell High School. My name is Joshua Feck Quest. I am here with Seamus for the first time, and I am very excited, man. How's it going? It's going well, except for some odd reason I was booted out of the lobby, actually. Um, that is no bueno. So that is, that's, that could be better, to be completely honest. Could you well, let the captains know, and we'll just try and get that fixed up for you guys in just a moment. Uh, yeah, give me one, one second. second. Hold here. on, I, perhaps I could add you, and then I can spectate through your game. But... Yeah, I would have to go through pick and ban phases, and I think uh, you can spectate afterward, unless the code doesn't let you. So, in a second, yeah, go, I'll accept that. Um, but for now, the pick and ban phases are going. I have no contact with the captains, unfortunately. Um, so I will just go, and go, uh, go through pick and ban phases, as it is here. Um... Hecarim in Italy being banned out by Clear Lake High School. Bard is getting a ban from Lowell, along with Rek'Sai. I mean, I know you're not looking at it, but what do you think about a Bard ban, man? I think Bard is... He's been buffed so many times. Is he worthy? He, yeah, I, I think he's worthy. Um, yeah. He has a surprising amount of damage now in lane. Yeah, he's, he has a lot of damage. His chimes will now... Or his meeps will scale with experience, so he gets rewarded later in the game for traveling around he has a lot in his kit as well uh so he's definitely a champion that is a smart ban especially if they scouted out that they've played a lot of bard and i'm just getting confirmation that the game yes. is going to be remade yeah so a lot is going to be remade we'll try and get you guys in there really no clue i think that was a reto please moment hey uh uh yeah there was i guess you were in the we were in the lobby with yep. me expecting i don't really understand it either um so should be the same bands and uh yeah we'll be underway in just a moment um oh uh, yeah yeah there you go all right so i'm in the lobby right now hopefully i should stay around oh and i'm there we go so champion select you guys already know i'm i'm josh effect as quest and we're here with simus <laughs> so hey here we Take go two. Half, half the job already done heck yep. from rex i nidalee bard is going to be banned so yeah, you were talking about Bard. He yeah, he has gotten a lot of those. Uh, I got. I don't even think they're subtle buffs, but I think Bard when he came out was just so not played that or, you know so underwhelming that his buffs didn't really impress anybody until they started actually playing him, and that's when you really realize the guy's kind of powerful. Yeah, I think there were a number of buffs. Uh, there were I think three that they eventually made, and some of the important ones were they changed the missile speed, so the missile speed is faster, you can land the stun easier. They changed, uh, of course, like I said before, the chimes, how often they occur, and then also how much experience you get from them. So he's a much better champion, obviously, we see that band out. Yeah. And interestingly enough, we will see Clear Lake High School pick up the Sivir first. Now that's telling me they want a team fight composition. Yeah, they have a team fight composition. They have it on the hunt for uh, from Severe, but that's also kind of a safe laner too. I mean, mm -hmm. you can push really hard, but you also have spell shield. And I'm surprised to see Lowell not take away Morgana. Of course, free gaming still has yet to pick, but Gragas being hovered over. Pretty standard, a uh, huge jungle pick right now. I mean, it's Gragas and Rek'Sai. One of them was banned out, and then they. Uh, I mean, yeah, they clear like they uh, first. Yeah, they first picked their their ADC which isn't really taking anything away from Lowell High School. Yeah, Lowell right now, they're hovering over the Gragas pick. Taiwan, or Tai Yan, excuse me. Um, <laughs> a master tier jungler, so he's incredibly experienced in the jungle, don't get me wrong. However, he actually hasn't played that much jungle and solo queue. So perhaps Clear Lake thought that he really would want to pick it up because um, they might have done a little bit of scouting, but it's going to be the Gragas as well as the Vladimir. That's going to... I said before that Saber's going to be kind of teamfight oriented, but Gragas and Vlad are no slouches either. They can bring a ton of AP damage to the fight. Now that's for sure, and a lot, I mean, a lot of the meta right now is just massive teamfights and big CC walls. Now, of course, Vladimir doesn't offer any CC, but what he does offer is damage implication, which you have these jungler, uh, these tank junglers who do high amounts of damage like Gragas and have AoE damage as well, just like Gragas. I wouldn't be surprised to see more AoE kind of damage coming out from Lowell High School to be amplified um, by Vladimir. Because one, one of the downfalls to AoE damage is not as bursty as single target damage. When you have damage amplification, it kind of makes up for that every now and then. If you can get everything to coordinate properly, it does uh, sometimes, it sometimes, uh, you know, Compensate. I should have touched that. Yeah, but on the flip side, if you don't coordinate it properly, like imagine yeah. you got the Hemo Plague out and then uh, Tyon accidentally knocks everyone back 
then that would yeah. go really, really poorly for Lowell. So we'll see if they have the synergy to make that sort of team fight comp work. Um, one thing I want to highlight, the Maokai and Thresh pickup actually makes it seem like Clear Lake High School, they still need some damage here. So perhaps they'll go a damage jungler or a very, very strong mid lane carry. Otherwise, I mean, yes, Sever is a very strong ADC, don't get me wrong, but she's very utility based. And just look at the damage that Lowell has right now. I feel like they might beat their match. So let's see what their last two choices are. I think I think a Kogma wouldn't be too bad right now. Especially yeah. especially having them picking Soraka. I mean I mean yeah, that's, had, yeah. I was thinking something like Kogma. Um because there's very little that can dive onto the Kogma. Exactly, yeah, and, and Soraka brings no CC to the game either. Exactly. Oh, uh, but we do that's actually have an R. Ari. Ari and Jarvin. Yeah, Jarvan is actually another interesting pick there. I'm not really, uh, I guess I'm not, I'm not really too keen. I mean, they did ban out Rek'Sai and Sejuani, and then Gragas was picked away. Jarvan is a good pick still um, outside of those. Um, Hecarim was also banned out. So yeah, really not too much left in the jungle, though Cho'Goth was up. I'm surprised he wasn't picked either, especially in the team comp they had, because he offers CC tank and a ton of damage at that, along with objective control. Yeah, ever since Jarvan got that armor reduction a couple patches ago, we haven't seen him that often. However, he's not too bad if he builds Cinder Hulk or even if he goes more offensive, tries to burst the carries. And Clear Lake High School, they have a nice little bombo going on. If they can get the AoE from the Saber Boomerang Blade, from the Ari Orb, from the Maokai Ultimate, and the Cataclysm from Jarvan, they could instantly just crush Lowell High School in these fights. And if that is going to be Cassiopeia, I think what Loa's going to go for is, there are no slouches in team fights, but they're going to want to have mini skirmishes, you know? They're not going to want to group up because they don't have the easy wombo that Clear Lake's composition has. But they do have a ton of damage, especially yes. with Cassiopeia being picked up there. A ton of damage between Vladimir and Cassiopeia by themselves. But then, like I said, Gragas, one of the highest damage, damaging uh, junglers, and still being a tank at that, too. Yeah. And, yeah, throw Lucian in in the back. I don't know. I don't really. Know, I still don't really know where Soraka fits in here. Besides that, they are kind of a you know damage heavy comp. Maybe they want to keep uh, keep themselves alive just from. Like, I don't. I don't. I don't really know where the. Honestly, I'll be honest. I don't really know where the Soraka fits in completely here. Um. Yeah, the Soraka is a wild card pick. I don't really know how it's gonna play out. Could we go really bad? Could go decent, I guess. What's interesting is. I think to a certain extent, Soraka kind of functions like a bard in that she wants to heal and roam around the map and maybe protect this Cassiopeia who might have a hard time early in lane. But the thing is, Lowell High School, they were the team that banned out the bard. Right. The Soraka is going to be interesting. I feel like there might have been better choices, but Seja, yeah. he might know something that we don't. I mean, a Nautilus was up at that. I mean, a Nautilus is a great pick right now, especially in a team comp where you don't have that much CC. Well, and yeah. All right. What I think Lowell is relying on is the fact that they're just going to position well as a team. I think this is um, more of like a really confident pickup because if they position well and don't get smashed, don't get immediately wamboed in the fight, then think of the regen. Think of the sustained right. damage they have. Lucian can kite back forever. Cassiope can kite back forever. Vlad will be healing himself. Soraka will be healing the entire team. This could be such a struggle for Clear Lake High School if they can't find the picks. And so Soraka does help the composition in that sense. She does. But there's also a, a Cassiopeia and the Soraka don't have escapes. So when you have on the side of, uh, of Clear Lake on the hunt and lockdown CC, they're just like point and click CC between Twisted, uh, with Twisted Advance on, uh, on Maokai. I think it's going to be a little hard for Lowell. I'm actually I surprised. Agree. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm kind of surprised at that one. Um, we'll see how it goes. This is a I believe this is a best of three. Am I correct on that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, best of three. Um, but the timer is counting down. We are going to give a shout out to our sponsors, HSL sponsors, Twitch.tv. Thank you for sponsoring us, the largest video game broadcasting and chat community. You guys might have heard of them because you're probably on us right on Twitch <laughs> right now. And if you're not, then I question your morals and judgment of how you view us. Newegg, the leading online retailer for computer, uh, computing hardware and software. Rocket MSI, producing innovative, high-quality, high-performance products used by gamers around the world. Jinx Apparel, Loot Crate, Tespa, and... Uh, yeah, it's not Blizzard. So that one's for Hearthstone only. So yeah, mm -hmm. Tespa, got it. Was, Blizzard is uh, sponsoring HSL's League of uh, Legends League? No. That, would, that would be interesting. Yeah, not this time around. But um, <laughs> yeah, just a minute left before we will get into the rift. 
So we've talked about the team compositions. One thing that we haven't touched on is the potential level one. And with oh, the yeah. Jarvan, Demacian Standard, and the potential Thresh Hook from Banshee Rush, I think we might see Clear Lake go for something. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing. I mean, they have a very superior level one if they wanted to go for that one. Because, again, I mean, if they do invade, what's really going to stop them? There is absolutely no CC on the entire side of Lowell besides a body slam. Maybe a barrel roll if you want to get that slow. Well, technically, the slow or the uh, silence, if yeah. Seja has like an amazing AoE silence and root, but that's pretty unlikely and also pretty telegraphed. It has to be, it has to be amazing. Also. Yeah. They're going to be amazed by how weak their level one is. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, Lowell High School, they're going to have to play this well because I really don't think their team composition is as balanced as Clear Lakes, but are loading into the rift. We'll just have to see. Yeah, uh, what do you, I mean, we can do a little bit more on this one. What do you think of a, I mean, I haven't seen uh, a lane swap in a while. What do you think of a lane swap in this one? Because, I mean, I, th I think that would actually benefit the lane for uh, Lowell because I don't think they can win uh, a 2v2 against Severe and Thresh. Maybe. the th uh, Lucian into Severe and Thresh won't have too hard of a time, but again, that Soraka wild card. Right. She's immobile. If she gets hooked up and takes a ton of damage, she just gets focused down. Um, yeah, yeah you're right. That is yeah. going to be really tough. And of course, we see the borders. Everyone on Lowell's Challenger, they might just be relying on their uh, just core solo, uh, solo mechanics just to you know carry this one through. I mean, which ha does happen. It's yeah. Not unheard of. And uh, I mean, Lowell's a, Lowell, like I said, they're last year's winners championships. Uh, champions. They're they're damn good. There's a reason they're champions. But we'll see if they're. I mean, I think you're right. I think this is just sort of them banking on the fact that they're confident and they think they can outplay the enemy opponents. So let's see if they can do so successfully. I remember, uh, okay, so I really like this new base gate kind of thing that they got going. Well, not the base gate, but like the weird a little uh, little rush that they have mm -hmm. uh, now with League. It was implemented a while ago, but I don't know. I remember in season two, I'm just going to fill up some time here while they rush to invade because it's, it's got to happen. So uh, I remember in season two, uh, TSM used to actually play Darius, or uh, not Darius, uh, Jace top lane with Darius and he would get the acceleration gate, and they would rush to a bush before the enemy team did on their side yeah. and uh, and kind of surprise them. But... Yeah, the base gate waiting for 15 seconds is also really nice for people who have slower computers. That's some loading. Yeah, oh. yeah and they spotted up by Ward. <gasps> Very well scouted by uh, Lowell High School. Until minion spawn. Looks like they're just going to go back place a word of their own on the side or from Clear Lake and go back. Yeah, I guess they're, I mean, everyone's too scattered out and they are spotted out and I think they know that. I know Kresha, Kreshius got up there a little bit faster than everyone else. Probably saw the side of Lowell throw out some wards, so it's going to play a little defensive now. Yep, Kreshius is going to start letting those saplings wait around until the raptors come up. That is pretty easy. Most top laners now can easily get a level 2 and just teleport into that top lane. Right. Yeah, like especially said, with Maokai. Yeah, really good defensive warding. All four yellow trinkets were used by Lowell to make sure that nothing cheeky happened. <laughs> no invades with that Thresh. And it looks like we'll get more or less Look up. standard jungle See starts. Yeah, 2v2s and uh, standard jungle starts as well. So, take it with you. yeah, pretty, uh, pretty textbook start here. Um, I'm surprised. But, yeah, use it to me. I think, uh, I think an opportunity is missed, but... We'll see how it turns out. Like I said, I think Lowell they might just be relying on their skill alone, which so far, that mid lane is working out pretty well, because two for two, Noxious Blast has landed, by the way. Three Ow. for three. So aspects of the Serpent stacking up quite nicely. Yeah, the Cassiopeia is incredibly strong late game, but her early game, she usually gets punished in the lane phase. Um, so the fact that Nuff is already taking so much damage, not too great. But, I mean, level 1 trading, not incredibly significant. Once these guys get a couple of higher levels, we'll see what happens. But speaking of higher levels, that level 2 power spike in the bot lane, they're about to get it. No. They got it. Ooh. Well. Did not, uh, did not go for Sorak. I don't even know who he was going for. Could have went for either one of them. There, but... Yeah, straight in the goalpost, though. He yeah. tried to go for both of them, but he went for none. If only. He was 100% thrash fan rate if, we, if that were the case. Yeah. Oh my 
god. Man, right, why hasn't Ryan made a champion like that? Uh, two hooks? I, well, they decided to make Bard. <laughs> it's, it's dead, I don't, I don't know. know, man. Oh, then, oh, yeah, we haven't seen Echo yet. I have not casted Echo Oh, that's yet. true. I was thinking about... He wasn't banned either, they just didn't feel confident playing him. Right, yeah, and he's, uh... He's, he's interesting. That's some, uh... Yes. Guess, yeah. Oh, here we go. Lucy and Taeyeon gonna be meeting up with each other here. Taeyeon actually took quite a bit of damage there. Yeah, nice damage from Sing though. Twin fangs off, two of them off before coming back up. So a uh, biscuit advantage in the mid lane for uh, Lowell High School. Oh, their lane's doing all right. One thing I really want to take notice of is. Bantu Rush is gonna land it. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. That was clever though. Yeah. Oh, nice play. That's getting a little bit of damage on the Genora. But here's the heal from Soraka. Watch how Seija is playing into this lane though. Seija's playing really far away so that Bantu Rush, even at max range, can't land the hook. And this this just lets Genora fight and just get repeatedly healed. When you're laning against the Soraka, if you can't burst the Soraka down, the Aiden Gary is just going to continuously be healed over and over and over again. And it's incredibly efficient for strong lane bully Aiden carries like Lucian, for example, to fight in these pseudo 2v1 situations, and then you just let the Soraka heal you. So, they've yep. done a fairly good job so far. And you can see that slight gold lead now, or slight CS lead for Sinor. Yeah, odd pick, but wise decisions, wise strategy. Yeah, they're, the they're playing it really well. Yeah, I do like that a lot, so... Yeah, and like I said, it's actually leading to a CS advantage as well, so yeah, not working out for them. And uh, and with the way pushing towards them, good see yeah. a gank. Yeah, and they yeah they have it nicely frozen too, right outside their minion wave yep. or their their turret, I should say. So yeah, very well played by the well. So. Color new surprise, I suppose. Let's do the top lane. Not really sure what's gonna happen up here. Mm -hmm. Although uh, now I see it because Precious. Huge amount of damage onto free gaming. I don't think free gaming was expecting that. He has to chuck some health bots and regen himself. That's one of the best benefits of being a flat of mirrors. You do get that extra health. Oh, nice. Nice. Look, Destin's coming out to the end. Some, something stopped him. Was that the. Uh, was that, yeah, the, uh, that was a Soraka uh, silence. That was a Soraka silence. Soraka silence. Hey, Yon is there. He's coming in. He's going to buy some. Throws down the barrel roll, slows them all down. He's the only one there in range, though. Hook from Banshee Rush missing onto Janora. Yeah, interesting trade. Yeah, that was a nice silence. Yeah, that was Asia. fantastic. Because obviously, if you do remain in the duration of the field, you will get locked up and rooted. And a three man. Root from Seija kept Janor alive. They haven't even burned summoner spells. Yeah, very well played. I thought my I thought my game was glitching. I just, everyone was over the the, the uh, silent circle, so I'd actually didn't see it go off. And they were all just oh, okay. there. Free gaming. Ouch. Yeah. Underestimating the damage, not getting the respect. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. The yeah. The Maokai yeah. burst. That, uh, what's that Doran's ring? <laughs> that was insane. Free gaming wasn't expecting it. I don't think we were either. No. Oh, Destin's landing on to Seja, but nothing going to come of it. Godly Gale is not in position for it. First hook landed on the unicorn, too. Huh? That was the first hook landed on the unicorn. Yeah. I, I, I know you said unicorn, but I didn't hear the first part of the sentence. I was like, wait a second, what, what unicorn? Oh, Soraka. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I got you. Yeah. Remember when Soraka was a solo laner? And what if you had solo lane Soraka versus Arcade Hecarim? The unicorn versus unicorn. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> All right. Nice star calls landing onto the uh, onto the ADCs in the bot lane, or at least the bot lane in general. Especially giving Seja oh. nice health bonus. But another hook landing play comes in play here. Godly Gale does get the boomerang blade onto her, but not too much happening outside of that. She's gonna chug her biscuit, or at least eat her biscuit, and be fine with this heal another day. Yeah. So the bot lane's been pretty even, but I want to talk about the mid lane right now. Sang is doing an incredibly good job. He's actually ahead. And CS against Snuff, and he's now stacking up that tier of the Goddess. I think right now, Sang probably doesn't have the damage to kill Snuff, but if he keeps poking him out and keeps getting this minion lead, that's going to be very, very good for Lowell. Yeah. He's keeping that mid lane, uh, keeping the uh, 
CS advantage as well. And this is interesting because Sang has a tier of the goddess, which means his power isn't really there. He, didn't, he went back, didn't get anything for power at all, while Snub did with the, uh, with the Phoenix Codex. He's not trying to take advantage of that a little bit more, but there's a move up on the side of Sang now, so that's going to help him out. Stack that tier up quite early. You know, not only that, but I'm surprised that we really haven't seen much action from C. Lucy. Yes, he has yeah. an ultimate now, but Jarvan is a fairly effective level uh, or pre-6 jungler. Did see him go bot, and it, that was close. It ended up being a 3v3, so not too many summoners burned from either side. But on an immobile champion like Cassiopeia, I feel like he might have been able to do something earlier. Yeah, definitely, and I'm, yeah, I'm surprised too. We have seen a little bit of action from Taeyeon, just a little bit. And actually, I think that was only on, I was like, that was on G. Lucy. He was able to see like, saw a little bit in the bottom from uh, Taeyeon. He actually got into the fight. G. Lucy got silenced and just kind of went back. So yeah, not much happening. Yeah, like you said, easy to pre-gank, or uh, gank pre-level 6 as a Jarvan. Get the flag toss, knock him up. Gank all the way to early level 2. Wanted. Yeah, not seeing it this time around. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Freak Gaming does have the Hextech Revolver now. It's going to be uh, going to be life stealing or spell vamping, I should say. A little bit easier. Maybe survive that first a little better. Yeah, Vlad. Early levels, he's not incredibly strong because his cooldowns are very high, and he also doesn't have that much right. um, spell vamp. But once he does get that Hextech, and once his cooldowns get a little bit lower, he starts ramping up majorly. So far, honestly, this early game has been pretty measured, but what I think is fascinating, since it's been so slow-paced, is that both of these teams are comfortable going into the late game. Both of these teams are comfortable just farming up. We haven't even seen a dragon be attempted by either side. And what that means... Oh, Asia getting caught out. Nice look on Asia, and their wall actually goes down, as Fox should say. Norix is going to get healed. Is Seja going to go down? He is not. Heal's going to keep her alive. She did make a wish. Saving her own life. Boomerang Blade like, just going to miss. That was a big advantage over... Ooh. Oh my god. Another big advantage going over to Clear Lake in the bot lane now. Yeah, maybe if Banshee Rush had taken Ignite though, they might have been able to pick up the kill there. However, they will just decide to recall after getting that huge amount of damage. And so, like I was saying, both these teams are completely fine with, you know, playing it fairly slow, and yeah. let's get some items and then start fighting. But what's interesting is, because you and I discussed this in Pick and Ban, the team fight of Clear Lake High School is way more straightforward and honestly stronger than Lowell's fight, so... Oh, oh. Seja! Oh, Seja got No flash. Yeah, no flash, nothing to help him out. There was no heal. Actually, no, the heal was used by Janora. It wasn't enough. Kill picked up by the God the Gale. Nora, maybe getting hooked again. Uh oh. There it is. The Echo Flay gonna deny the Relentless Pursuit. Oh, Here comes the Teleport though. From Free Gaming, it is cancelled. And Nora was packed away with a bleak so far. Meanwhile, in the mid lanes, a little bit of pressure here. And here is the pressure. Nice hook! Almost hitting the mini, but not quite. G Lucy picks up that kill. There's a flash. Dang, he's gonna get charmed. He's gonna go down. Trade for trade in the mid lane. They, uh, yeah, Petrifying Gaze was, was used earlier. Didn't have that one. Snub still has his Spirit Rush up, though, so... Well, now he doesn't. Oh, no, he used it. Yeah. Down. Either way, top lane, we got action. Nemo Flage going down. It's going to increase the damage on the Crocodus, but his ultimate is actually going to decrease some of the damage. So, almost cancel each other out. Free game, he still gets it up there. That will be Ancients now. Meanwhile, Taeyeon flashes and kills the Godly Gale. Him up. No dragon. Dragon gonna go over to G Lucy is still there. G Lucy cuts might, Taeyon does not. Yeah, big advantage over G Lucy right now. And Taeyon and Seja, they just want to keep G Lucy off of it. Say, we'll do the dragon later. As long as you don't do it now. That's exactly what happened. Full team's go back. So, a couple of things went in favor of Clear Lake High School there. They got the kills bot lane, but then they tried to go for too many plays. Precious was fighting free gaming in the top lane, while Crescious had teleport available. I think the better call would have probably just had Crescious teleport and protect the dragons since free gaming teleport was down. But he actually dies solo to free gaming and the dragon is stopped. This puts the gold in the lead for Lowell High School as they picked a couple kills for themselves and they are starting to ramp up. 
Yeah, Crush uh, is going to try to fight that top lane. He has a Spectral's Cal now. He's going to help out a little bit against, uh, against Free Gaming. Free Gaming now is Will of the Ancients. He has a lot more spell damage, a lot more ability power. Oh my god, ability power. Snub getting chunked by one Noxious Blast and two Twin Fangs. Almost, oh my god, what was that, like two quarters of health? Uh, no, three quarters of health. Snub, a lot of damage. Snub, of course, his passive is going to provide a little bit of sustain. Yeah. And he does have one biscuit, but that's only one. We're seeing solo laners of uh, Clear Lake High School. They're just getting bullied down at this point. Yeah, so far. Especially in the top lane right now. Although the mid lane, the CS gap is a little bit... Actually, I was going to say it's a little bit bigger, but now now it's not. Hook! Far hook landing on this edge of Banshee Rush. Not going to go in there. And Taeyeon in the area. We stick around. So you might body slam over the wall into the bush. Yeah, there it is. We going to be spotted by a word. Yeah. Hey, get the pick word though. There you go. Worth worth the man for the body slam. Yeah, yeah, technically. And uh, he's gonna make his way to the mid lane. He's gonna walk over another ward though. Be Lucy there. I anticipate that. Oh, gang in the mid lane. Yeah, gang in the mid lane, knocking up the thing. Nice, petrifying gaze on the snub. This is gonna be enough. He does take him down for the thing. Still falls to Yan. They're a little too late. Actually blasting G Lucy away. So again, trade for trade in the mid lane. This time G Lucy picks up that kill. Yeah, Snuff. He's trying to get a kill onto Sang, but the thing is, when you're already into Cassiopeia, you have the ability to outplay the Cassiopeia. It's just not working out for Clear Lake and Snuff. He goes down again, and considering Sang was ganked, that was a pseudo 2v1 situation. Picking up a kill there is excellent for Lowell. Yeah, that was the best in a bad situation for sure. And uh, Yeah, and it's not just a kill, it's a kill on the mid laner, which means that you're going to keep him from farming a little bit more, which since you died, that's great, because that means he's not going to catch up at all. So, yeah, very well played by Zang. And uh, well played by Free Gaming, too, picking up a top lane turret, first turret of the game, going over to Lowell High School. And Free Gaming is... He's pretty powerful right now. Going through even that special cow has a needlessly large rod now as well. 35 CS up over his laner, his opposing lane. That's a pretty huge right now, considering he gave up first blood. Nice charm on this thing. Gonna be enough. There's the knight going down as well. Has the spirit rush out. So Bang didn't have ultimate power. Bang does not have ultimate. There's a flash coming out right now. The poison is gonna finish it up. Another trade mid lane for mid lane. Yeah. Once again, but again, the slight advantage in the fight was in favor of Clear Lake High School because the Spirit Rush was up. But still, Tsang is just such a fantastic Cassiopeia player. Maybe we should yeah. check him out for scripts because he picks up another kill in that mid lane. Yeah, and, and uh, well, well. Oh, this is, this is really good for Lowell. They can trade kills back and forth all they want because Vlad and Cassiopeia are simply getting stronger and stronger. That's gonna yeah. be really, really bad for Clear Lake. Yeah, Cassiopeia is going to outscale Ari just by asking the Surf alone, by like getting those noxious blasts off before he dies. And what really uh, benefited uh, thing in the mid lane is that Snub not only uses Spirit Rush, but uses Ignite and Flash just to pick up that kill. But now Snake has Petrifying Haze and Flash up to help either uh, pick up the kill of his own, maybe even stay alive this time, or escape a kill. Yeah, at this point, I'd like to see a dragon play coming out of low roll potentially, although they haven't taken any of these turrets in the bottom mid lane, so maybe they might go for that first. Oh, or they might make a catch onto G Lucy. He needs to be careful. Yeah. But you see, both teams have a lot of vision in that area, and we know it's an important objective to take. However, they've just been playing tiptoe around it. Neither team is confident enough to commit to that. Yeah, some warding going down from both teams around the dragon, but yeah, like I said, not really. Not too much commitment going toward it yet, just making sure the enemy opposing team does not take it. And if you can't take it, that's probably the best you can do, unless you can uh, place yourself in some sort of position where you can pick up a dragon, or a turret that's off a of it. Yeah, that is a bait. Oh by no. Yeah, thing. Yeah. She rush gonna flash. Yeah, that was very nice. Now he's been hooking Sato all game, but this time that was not what he wanted to do. Well, blue take, gets the smite. Oh, G Lucy he is over there with Precious, so Snub is on his way as well. Free gaming. 4v2. Yeah, 4v2. Nice hook by Banshee Rush. Free gaming. He has to flash out, but that was kind of insane. I think he should have just saved his flash on that one. He's dead. 
So a nice pick. A little bit of... Ooh, well, the Gale is taking a lot of damage, but probably should be able to get alive. That was a very greedy attempted blue steal, but Taeyeon did get away with it. So some would argue that's worth solo laner <laughs> for, uh, for the objective. I'm sure yeah. Taeyeon is definitely arguing it's worth, but... Yeah, I don't think the game is saying it's worth either. Yeah. Let's see what Clearly can get off of this. They're all very low now, so it looks like yeah, we'll see a dragon start with teleport available. It might just even give it up. No smite on G Lucy either, so this is uh, more than likely going to go over to Taeyeon. Of course, smite is not up for Taeyeon either, so they're actually just going to back off or drag it out a little bit. Right, like and steal. There's the Taeyeon going down. Nice silence by Sage, making sure they cannot hook or jump over the wall. Very nicely played. Saw Sage or Rush. Those Lucidity boosts gonna provide so much cooldown so he can just keep zoning out the enemy team and healing his own. Precious, he gets the turret, oh. but he might get chased now. Yeah, he's gonna be chased. Oh, he's gonna go down. Actually, no, Precious, he's in a bad situation now. He has a flash. Evil Blaze is not up, by the way. But a flash is now used by Precious. It's gonna save his life, but may have been able to get out of that one. Actually, I think for game, he probably would have saved Relentless on that one. Yeah, it was close, and he didn't want to take the risk, but... Flash Twisted Advance is a really big part of the engage coming out of Clear Lake High School, yeah. so that's a very long summoner down. And right now, Clear Love... Or, excuse me, Clear Lake... Uh, I got him confused. I got the school confused with the jungler. I'm sure Clear, they're honored. <laughs> yeah. Clear Love's Clear pretty Lake. Baller. Yeah, I mean, I was about to say, G. Lucy is trying to look like Clear Love with his Jarvan <laughs> carry. He's 3-0, completed the Aegis as well as... Cinder Hulk, so he's going to be incredibly tanky, and not only that, provide MR to his team. This is incredibly important since it's also a double AP composition, oh, yeah. as well as the Gragas. So, G Lucy is looking very strong right now, and they need to rally around him. Clearly, he needs to find fights that G Lucy initiates and where he catches multiple enemy members off guard, and if they do so, they can end the fight before um, Lowell even knew it started. But if they can't do so, Solo is going to keep taking these minor advantages and snowball the game in their favor. Yeah, the uh, very good pick. Very nice pick up, I should say. Aegis of the Legion. Going to be built into the locket of the Iron Solari. Give his team, yeah, like you said, those, those uh, resistance stats, but also a very helpful shield, which is going to be extremely helpful whenever you're against the huge bursty champions like Desang and Free Games. Vladimir. Also, it does provide a little bit of health regen, and, um, I mean, not that Clear Lake needs the health regen, since a lot of their champion have their own built and sustain, but if you ever do decide to go in some sort of siege situation, either way, Age of Legion is a fantastic pickup, and I really like oh, the yeah. fact that G. Lucy is playing so selflessly, because some other players, and some players in solo queue games might just be uh, like, yeah. nah, man, damage, damage, yeah, Darvish. You, you know who you are, by the way. <laughs> I might have played with a couple of you today. I might be a little bit salty about that still. But, um... Speaking of solo queue, I like Free Gaming's idea of just pushing and pushing and pushing. Keeping Crushes out of the fight, out of the team fights, because he's pretty sure that Lowell can win. Oh. And yeah, that was an explosive cast down. This is a good mark. Kind of hard to catch an Ari, and that was one of the primary forms of engage that Lowell High School composition has. So they're really not going to be able to take any objectives anymore. This is the thing about Lowell's comp that we discussed before, though. Yes, yeah. they can fight well. However, their engage is very, very low. Very little crowd control. And it's skill sharp reliant. It's the explosive cask or um, maybe a flash petrifying gaze. So that is very inconsistent versus the Maokai engage versus the Jarvan engage versus Fresho or an Orange Charm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a moment. Although Taeyeon might be trying anything, something anyways. Wow. Yeah they're, yeah, they're still shoving back. I mean, of course, they're going to charm in on Taeyeon. Are they going to do anything with it? Though? Here comes the teleport from Free Gaming. Taeyeon taking up all this damage. He gets out of line. No, he doesn't. Crushes on the back line. Teleported as well. Huge burst. He does have a little bit of damage on this side still. This is actually going in the favor of clearly so far. Free Gaming not able to do anything. I know, they're still alive. Yeah, dang. Of damage now. It's actually three for two. Lowell turning it around in their favor. Staying at free gaming. A lot of damage. No tanks left though. Not on either side actually. 
I'm gonna be honest, I'm impressed that that ended up being a 3v2 or a 3 for 2 situation for Lowell because that was started under the enemy turret. However, the Godly Gale wasn't there for basically the entirety of the fight. He was farming the bot lane. So that was a 4v5 and then the turret as well. And the moment he got in the fight, his tanks were already dead, so the carries of Lowell High School simply had to focus him down and pick that kill up as well. They'll say thank you very much. And, um,. They like high school. They need to be careful. They could have potentially been a catch on the Gragas there and then been satisfied, but they tried to fight too heavily against their team without their Sivir. That's a big part of their damage. Yeah, Crescius, to his credit, he did come into the back lines very nicely, but yeah, he uses Twisted Advance onto Gragas, which, yes, did kill him, but you kind of want to save that sort of thing for someone like Free, uh, not Free Gaming. Yeah, yeah, even Free Gaming, or... Maybe even Cedric, keep the heals away from the team. Gragas is already out of that fight, so nice heal picked up by G Lucy. I'm kinda, I'm kinda going over it right now. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been an interesting game so far. The advantage, 1,000 gold lead to Lowell High School, however, they like high school, they still have options in this game. But they just need to be on the same page. Precious, like you said, he did have a very nice engage, he uh, flanked with the teleport, that was good. However, they weren't able to kill the sustain Seija in the fight until much later. And that way, the back line of Lowell High School, they just ran away. Yeah, and that's a... Uh... Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's... Yeah, it's kind of sad for for Clear Lake, because they had they had a really good setup there. They had a good intro, they just couldn't close it properly. And yeah, it's CCing, or at least using your CC to kill a, uh, an enemy who was already pretty much out. I don't think he I don't think he had his full cask at the time. He may have. He used it just prior to that on a whiff. But yeah, could have used that lockdown on somebody a little bit more high priority who had full health and a ton of damage, like the saying, or free gaming. So opportunity missed. They're gonna move on, try to try to do a little bit better. Yep. And uh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Catch roll out. Very nice done. Got the Gale. Ooh, if there's on the hunt, gonna take out free game cost. The Eagle play does go down onto Godly Gaming. He's into a single pool and uses Sonia's nice displays. He's gonna stay alive. Tayan in the back line. Gonna shut everyone off. No one's caught technically because no one died. <laughs> I guess. Is that the definition of a catch? It's not actually know. a catch if you don't die? <laughs> I don't know. No one died. That's the moral of the story here. Yeah, free gaming. Nice Vlad play there. Zone is the hook and just, as you can see, he's level 16 already, 25 minutes in the game, instantly healed. Oh, he doesn't have Sonya's now. Well, right. he's a level 16 Vlad with a lot of ages, Sonya's, and he has more convert food. I don't know if Clear Lake can fight the track here. They're missing several ultimates. They do have Catapult. Nope, Zemo plays either though. Precious, he's gonna go in with advance on the free gaming. Here comes Make the Wish Foundation. Red gonna keep everyone alive. Precious does go down. And another kill going over to Taeyon. He's taken down though by the Godly Gale. But the poison is gonna knock the flash. They can take out Suzuki on the way out. And the dragon is secured. Second dragon of the game going over to Lowell High School. Somewhat crucially in that fight, the locket of the Iron Solari active was down. D. Lucy would have had a thousand hit points for his entire team that could have maybe let Clear Lake go in and pick up a few more kills. However, things going in favor of Lowell High School now. They have two dragons, two scouts, and full lead. But they're still, they have the burden of trying to carry. They need to keep finding these fights that they've been finding, where they split the members up, where they don't get AoE. And, and to be fair, I mean, they're playing it well. However, if they mess up one time, simply once, and a number of their team goes, like three or four members of their team dies, then Clear Lake High School could go for a Baron, they could just push down middle turrets, and that could be very bad. So they're in a good position to win the game, however, the game isn't quite over yet. No, it's not, and that's actually what I wanted to point out. The gold gap isn't really that huge, and it's because Clear Lake has three turrets to one right now. They are securing turrets a little bit better, uh, a little bit better than um, Lowell High School, and it's playing in their favor quite a bit. And they're able, they're, they're trying to get a little bit more map control with these wards out, but two supers on the side of Lowell. They're doing a good job countering that as well. So, yeah, they kind of have to pick and choose their fights on the side of Lowell. And, uh, yeah, we've been talking about it. They need to land their, to play, I guess, play to their team comp and not miss. Don't whiff an explosive cast because you're vulnerable then. Mm -hmm. 
but we do see free gaming he's returning back to the split push and it's been working so well he's up almost a hundred cs over crushes now in that top lane and crushes cannot handle free gaming he is down two levels he's down a significant amount of gold uh, if you just look at the gold it's about a tenth or a two thousand gold difference Free gaming actually has the highest gold total in the game right now with over ten and a half thousand gold and this is a problem for Clear Lake High School because they really don't have anyone that can 1v1 the Vlad. So they need to try and find team fights and just sort of ignore the Vlad. That might be what they're going for right now. Oh, no, just wait. kidding. On the hunt. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, yeah. Now the hunt is pretty much wasted there. Which is, it's a nice, uh, nice twist of advance underneath the turret on the free gaming, but... You just gonna like, up? Yeah, I was gonna say, it's only like, like two Qs, one Q, just to, and there's a ground right there, like... There's no problem. It's a tough situation for Clear Lake High School. Lowell, well, say it until the game is over. The team composition doesn't have a lot of crowd control, but all of their members scale so incredibly yeah. well. I guess they're using tests for crowd control at this point. Yeah. And uh, this turret is going to go down probably the next wave. Nice. Oh, no, never mind. This wave is down. <laughs> Nice little shot of Sang, but no one there to follow it up. And I don't really like that Ban- I like that Banshee's landing these hooks, but he's not throwing them out productively. Every time he throws one out and hits, hits, it almost seems like no one's there to follow it up from his team. You know what's funny, though? I think that's actually a bait. Oh, like, hear me out. So that's like a problem with Thresh, though, is generally you'll see like hooks like that. What else can Banshee Rush do? He doesn't provide as much AoE. He's not as useful to his team in a very large sense like, uh, oh, Aeon getting caught. Aeon, yeah, that, that hook was productive. Led yeah, that hook was charm. good. Led into a charm, but now what? He walks away, you have a Soraka, you have to kill these guys. The hook is just a single man CC, and if your team isn't in a place that you can, uh, follow up, then it's really kind of useless, whereas Seija is providing AoE heals and AoE heals that the enemy needs to run through, and other champions like Nautilus, like, he, he can bother more, do more than a Thresh can. I, don't get me wrong, Thresh is an incredibly versatile champion, yeah. but I think as far as supports go, he kind of falls off. Yeah, I'm not here again. There's a flash and a play. Look, honest thing, they need to kill him. They still have a petrified game. Lock down all the members there. He's saying they can out of no, He does have a severe rush. He goes in, takes the kill. Gaming's there. Yeah, three gaming's there now. He's full health. He's going to destroy everyone. Crush it, though. He's looking for something. Ninja has to flash out. He's getting a little bit of health, health regen with the, uh, the star call. Oh. Crush picks him up, flashes out. Oh. Game, 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 game. Yeah, there's free gaming. Waste of flash. Overall, yeah, waste of flash two for four, uh, two for three, with two blinking health bars on the side of Clear Lake High School, and full health bars on the side of the remaining members of Lowell. Pretty sure Banshee Rush was listening to me casting and said, "Simus, you're an idiot," and does a fantastic <laughs> engage. Catch the thing. If you if you utilize Thresh like that, yes, he's very good in the late game. But um, I mean that was fantastic. Flash play hook onto Sang. But did you see the peel for Sang? The explosive cast, oh, the man. heal coming out of Seija. He did eventually go down, but he got so much damage onto Clear Lake High School's team before he went down. And then the rest of Lowell High School were able to pick it up. Oh my goodness. Even with a perfect catch onto the Cassiopeia, Lowell are still ahead. This game is getting so, so hard for Clear Lake to win. And that's what I, okay, I want to go over to Snub's build right now. Luna's Echo. It's really good. I like Luna's Echo. Helps you get around the map a little bit more. And uh, you're, you're, a, you're a mage assassin. You want mobility. It also gives you some wave clear. I'm going to think, if he had a death cap at that moment, well, on, hey, on. Hey, on Gragas. I reduced his hook this time around, but nice little cast coming out from Tayon. Blast everyone away as On the Hunt goes out. So that's a wasted On the Hunt, but a defensive explosive cast to also. Not another hook on a free gaming charm list, though. So play is nothing gonna happen from it. And in fact, free gaming is like, look at guys. I'm on the hunt's down. Do you. Another hook playing on a free gaming. Even though he does go down, he will see. Black drags out of there to more of the calling just to drive everyone away. But again, all that is happening, the ultimate's down, and Dragon being contested right now. Let's see what happens. See if his might is up. Can he steal this hook? No, it's not. Nice. Third dragon of the game going over to Lowell High School. Really interesting series of events there. 
Yeah. Banshee Rush landing every single hook, but always on the target that they're not really looking for. They have to... Their team is very good at making picks, and at this point of the game, that's what they have to do. It's, it's now or never. It's a very pick comp situation. Because they can't team fight since they're simply out of scale at this point, even without reliable crowd control. And they're just getting played left, right, and center. So, yeah, you were talking about picking. That's what I was talking about before. This, I, I feel Cat Snub went a Rabadon's Death Cap instead of a Root Echo. I think Tasang would not have gotten that Petrifying Gaze off because I think he would have died before he could have. I that completely might have been agree. A completely different story in that team fight. I think perhaps Luden's Echo on Ari specifically would have been better in a poke situation. And yes, Sivir is an okay poke champion, but their composition isn't really right. a poke sieged comp. It's, oh, it's much more catch comp. Let's see if they can make the catch here. Yeah. On the hunt here. Nice and cool to catch and break everybody up. Try to move through. That's fine game. Not really hitting anybody. This could be Lakeside Heights. This might be Lakeside Heights. This might be Lakeside Heights. This might be Lakeside Let's take out the Godly Hill going down as well. And he is, uh, once again, the only one in the midst of this fight now. Because everyone else has died. That is a 4-4-1. That's going to be fair. And over to Willow High School. Uh, Fekis, there, there was a lot of fighting there. And that was yes. exactly what Lowell was wanted. They were fighting on three different fronts. Yeah. Uh, Sager was getting faced down by Crescious. But Crescious doesn't have enough damage to not try to kill the support. Snuff was trying to kill... Sang, but Sang managed to stay alive, and then they were trying to go for Taeyeon instead, but he's incredibly tanky. And then on the other side, also, Venora was getting focused down by um, Godly Gale, Lucy, and Banshee Rush. And eventually, yes, he did go down. However, this is a skirmish comp that Lowell is playing, and if you fight on so many divided fronts, you're simply not going to have the damage to win all those battles. And as we saw, that's the four for one. And now Baron over to Lowell High School. They have 10,000 gold lead. And really for the past 15, 20 minutes, they have not let go of control of this game. No, and you were talking about, yeah, the skirmish comp. Yeah, Tenora went down. We still have two big damage dealers to deal with. Three gaming and just saying, and Locker of Iron Solari is built. I mean, Abyssal Scepter, Spirit Massage. But, I mean, it's there's so much penetration. There's, there's Void Staffs on the other side as well. So much to offer and to just get through all that. Also, the the auras won't be successful. They won't be as useful if you don't stack them. If you're yeah, fighting on those divided fronts, that's really something that um clear like they really can't fight in that fashion. And I also want to give shout outs to Taeyon, because he had a very, very nice explosion cast that started the fight in that fashion. Oh yeah, that was uh, yeah, because on the hunt was pot, but completely disrupted by the explosive cast. And yeah, that was a uh, very nicely played. It looked like, I thought for one second, Clear Lake was going to bring it back a little bit. But yeah, no, the power is way, way too much in the comp of uh, Lowell. Considering, like you said, huge skirmisher comp. They can win those little fights. Easy peasy. Yeah, if we just see the items. Godly Gale, he doesn't have less Whisper yet. But the amount of armor on Lowell at this point is insane. Gragas has over 100. He's at 153. Zoni is completed for Vladimir, so he has a nice amount of armor as well. And just the item spikes and how the champion scale at this point is really in favor of Lowell High School. They're trying to siege though, and this is still something their composition isn't great at. But Free Gaming is doing a lot of damage with the Baron of Minions to top turret. Yeah, so they do have empowered minions, so I mean, no matter what kind of gun you are, you can siege a little bit no matter what. Yeah, Free absolutely. Gaming, yeah, Free Gaming has two stacked cannon minions right now. And they're just wailing onto that top turret. And Maokai can't stop it. That guy has no long range to kill his minions. Not at all. He has to full on engage onto the game in order just to stop him here, but if he does, he'll die. And yeah, this turret is going to go down. The hipper exposed now in the top lane. But nobody's backing on the side of, of uh, Clear Lake because if they do, bot lane is going to be rushed really hard. So they are in such a lose lose situation right now. Yep. I, I want to say people call to catch 22, but I mean, there's really nothing to catch here. You're going to lose all the time. Every series. Yeah, at this point in the game, I just feel like Lowell High School have too many advantages. The Baron will, the Baron buff did expire, however, they do have an inhibitor. And Free Gaming is here. They might look to fight. He's actually going to go on. He's going to pay for that. He's going to go way back to the enemy team. Sorry, he's going to do a picture. Nice petrifying game. My god. Not the Gale. He's going to go down. 
on the side of Lowell High School. Taeyeon, the only one even remotely low. And I think, honestly, that's just going to be the game. There yeah. are a decent amount of minions. Godly Gale, he's going to have to make a godly play right now if he wants to keep his team alive. He's like yeah. five members of Lowell High School. This is going to end it right here. Yeah, no reason not to. Very, very well played by Lowell High School. Like I said, that control for about 25 minutes. It was a little bit even. Five, about 25, maybe 20, 25 minute mark, but yeah, team fight after team fight, Lowell kept winning. Great positioning, great way to play to their team comp as well. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about before is that I, I wasn't sure. Both teams were fine with farming in the early game. However, when you have like a Jarvan, a fantastic early game jungler, you're going to want to get more pressure because otherwise, you know, Lowell's just going to scale and scale. They did. So they do pick up the first win, but this is, of course, a best of three, guys. So stick around as we're going to get into the lobby and get right back to you with game number two.